So Gary, we've been discussing various dimensions of global value chains and the policy implications of global value chains during the course of this executive training seminar. And you've done a lot of work on the governance of these chains. So what's one of the main kind of things that you would like to convey in terms of how that has changed? Or what are, what are the real issues now in terms of governance of these supply chains? I think uh, two big changes in governance have been taking place. One is on the company side and the other is on the uh, country side. I think on the company side, one of the things that we've seen is that the big lead firms in these global supply chains have been talking about the need to streamline or rationalize the way these chains are organized. And they've been doing it by dramatically cutting down the number of suppliers from 300 to 400 suppliers that they had 20 to 15 years ago down to 25 or 30. And they're saying that those suppliers have to be larger, more capable, technically sophisticated, but also strategically located. Uh, I think that plays into a, a big change that's occurring in governance on the country side as well because on the one hand we've seen the growth of emerging economies that have been uh, critical actors and it's taking us beyond the original BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China to 10 or 12 big countries and that's also including uh, Turkey, South Africa, Mexico, Indonesia and I think what's happening in a lot of those countries is they're rethinking the policy question because they're big enough to have an impact on the global economy. And so I think we're starting to see on the governance side and the policy space a return of a much more active role of the state in these big countries. Uh, and I think in the global value chain literature, we're talking about that now in terms of a new type of industrial policy that's, that's linked to the global value chains themselves as opposed to the old type of industrial policy that's much more protectionist and linked to import substitution. And the one other governance change I think that's occurring on the countryside is with small countries. Because the small countries are very aware that they aren't large enough to influence their position in the chain directly. They don't have big internal markets like the emerging economies. And so I think they're trying to think about how can they use uh, regional integration schemes as one way where that can, might give them a little bit more power. How can they improve their human capital? Because they're very aware that as they're gonna plug into these chains and move up the chains, they need to have a more highly skilled workforce. And I think they're really trying to re-engage with companies in terms of uh, some of the higher value issues in terms of these chains. So I think we're seeing changes in governance on, on several levels. Yeah. Now it's pretty clear that there's no one-size-fits-all in terms of how you approach these value chains. And right. That's been very clear from the discussions we've had. Mm -hmm. What is your take on, you know, as you know, this is an executive training seminar, which is part of the Academy of Global Governance here at uh, the EUI in Florence. So what is your take in terms of the value of these types of programs, which really focus on kind of people who are in, in the middle of their careers or in various places in their careers, but coming back and, you know, learn? Yeah. Yes. So I think I have uh, two takeaways from the way you've set this up here at the Academy of uh, Global Governance. One is uh, the speakers that you brought in actually are uh, extremely well informed in a variety of different areas. So I'm finding that I'm learning quite a bit just listening to the other co-speakers who are talking about what they're doing in terms of path-breaking work. But the nice thing about the participants that you have brought in is because so many of them have had uh, a number of years of experience in international organizations. We're really starting to get not just a set of people who are knowledgeable uh, because of their country backgrounds or their disciplinary perspectives, but they're also informing each other and informing us about how their organizations are thinking about these issues. And I think by bringing in that set of people, you've created a, an opportunity to have uh, extra leverage in terms of what they're taking away because they're going to go back to their organizations and bring this knowledge into how those organizations might actually play into the, the issues uh, related to these global value chains and the global economy. So I think you've, you've done a great job of bringing in a, a sort of diverse and influential set of participants.